Hey everybody, this is Anthony with you again from Biblical Truth Reality. Welcome back to another video. This is going to be about the concept phrase of sola scriptura. Is it biblical or is it not? Yes, it is biblical. And I'm going to prove that to you in this video. It's a lengthy explanation, approximately 20 minutes or so, showing all the verses that imply sola scriptura, which basically means Bible only. It is biblical. Regardless what the Catholic Church says or any other denomination says, Sola Scriptura is biblical, and it is true. The Bible is sufficient. Stay tuned for that. Sola Scriptura, which means Bible only, is not in the Bible, but apostolic tradition certainly is. So when you hear, I don't follow the teachings of men, you can say, neither do I. I follow the teachings of God explained by the very men Christ entrusted to teach me. Christ gave his authority to the apostles and then gave them the authority to pass it down. This is called apostolic succession, and it is in the Acts of the Apostles, such as when they chose Matthias to replace Judas. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2 says, what you hear from me and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. This is how Christ set it up. So who are we to tell him he is wrong? Sola Scriptura is biblical. Here's the proof. Meaning of it. Sola Scriptura, Latin for by scripture alone, is a Christian theological doctrine held by most Protestant Christian denominations, in particular the Lutheran and Reformed traditions, that posits the Bible as the sole infallible source of authority for Christian faith and practice. In other words, the Bible is the final authority for all matters of faith and practice. The Catholic Church especially rejects this and claims it's not a biblical doctrine. What did Jesus say? John 14 6 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Since he is the truth, then all truth comes from him. So why do we need the Catholic Church? Interesting question. What did he say about the truth? These are a lot of passages I will be providing. But we must thoroughly see what Jesus said. John 8 31-32 Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I already provided the verse in John 14 6, where he says he is the way the truth and the life. His word is the truth because he is the truth. Therefore, he is the standard. If we continue in, the truth, Christ, then we are his disciples and we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free. Free from what? Keep reading. Verses 33-36 They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin and the servant abideth not in the house for ever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Sin is transgression of the law, 1 John 3 4. Which law is he talking about? The ceremonial civil or moral law? It's the moral law. Therefore if we break the moral law we are servant to it. The word commit, simply means pledging allegiance to it by giving power to it over you. In this case you cannot abide in the house forever. What house? The house of God. Our bodies are the temple, house, of God. We cannot live forever and we cannot be part of the body of Christ as servants of sin. But Christ, who is perfect, abides forever. It is the Son Christ Jesus, that makes us free from sin. Verses 45-47 And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Christ directed the truth coming from him. We can believe Christ because he is the truth. Then he calls the truth, God's words. John 14 6 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. In the same chapter. Verses 15 to 17 If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Love for Christ is conditional upon our obedience of his commandments. 
what are his commandments? Proverbs 3 1 My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments, Proverbs 7 2 Keep my commandments, and live, and my law is the apple of thine eye. Amos 2 4 Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Judah, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they have despised the law of the Lord, and have not kept his commandments, and their lies caused them to err, after the which their fathers have walked, Matthew 22 35 to 40 Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I know he said all the law, but this was before he died and was resurrected. Therefore after his resurrection, what can we apply verse 42? Romans 13 8 10 O no man any thing, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Very similar conclusion. Love is fulfilling the law and he quotes five out of the ten commandments. That is the moral law in context. The statement he said, and if there be any other commandment, is a simple way of stating, you know what I'm talking about. All the other commandments I could have listed, but don't have time to. What is the moral law? It's everything God declared to be sin. It is the objective standard of right and wrong. Therefore when Jesus Christ gave the summary that on those two greatest commandments hangs all the law and the prophets, that applies to us as referring to the moral law. If you want to love God and keep His commandments, you have to keep His moral law. What is part of the moral law? The Ten Commandments, including the Sabbath, dietary laws, staying away from pagan holidays that break the Ten Commandments, and everything else called sin, iniquity, abomination, transgression etc. Where do you find the moral law at? In the Catholic Church? A church building? Other denominations? No. You find it in the Bible. You don't know what sin is unless you have the Bible. How can the Bible not be sufficient by itself if we have to read the Bible to know who God is, His plan, His expectations, and His law? Yes there are multiple false interpretations. But that doesn't negate the fact that the Bible is sufficient enough. According to the words of Jesus Christ, if you want the Holy Spirit to dwell with you forever, you have to love Christ and keep His commandments. Again, what are His commandments? The Law. Continuing on. John 14 21 He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. You have to have his commandments and keep them to be defined as one who loves Christ. The result is you will also be loved of the Father in Christ. Where in the law of God does it say anything about attending a church building service, or the Catholic Church being the truth, or the Pope, or the Bible not being sufficient enough because you have to go to scribes or priests or a phony baloney Pope? It doesn't. Therefore, they are adding to God's words, concluding that the Bible is not sufficient. Verses 23 to 24 Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. We already established that the conditional rule about your love for Christ is keeping his words, which is scripture, which also is his law included. Is God continually inspiring new scripture for religions like the Catholic Church to tell us about? No. How can Paul write in 2 Timothy 3:16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, if it's continually being spoken and there's no end to it? Verses 25 to 26 These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Teach you all things. What things are those? It is all truth. John 16 7, 13 14 Nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Is there truth outside of Christ and the Bible? The Bible, yes, but Christ? No. He is the Creator and all truth comes from Him. 
mankind didn't invent mathematics, science, languages, etc. Christ did. All those topics and others teach the truth about their subjects. What about truth about God and the New Testament Church? Do we need to go to a New Testament Church building or denomination to find out what that truth is? No. The Scripture is the truth about God and doctrine. John 17 16-19 They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Jesus said, Thy word is truth. What is his word? Yes Jesus is the word, see John chapter 1, but also it's scripture, his words. Do we have all of the scripture in the Bible of 66 books? It's by faith, logic, and evidence that I say confidently, yes. And as soon as people start accusing the Bible of having books removed deliberately, that leads to a downward endless spiral of conspiracy theories. That is not Christ exalting. That is man exalting because according to people like the Catholic Church and other denominations, they think without them, you are stupid. So they actually believe in exalting themselves, making themselves their own gods, just like the serpent warned Eve about in the garden. That if she took of the forbidden fruit they will be as gods. And mankind is one of it ever since. John 18 37-38 Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. The Scripture is the truth because it is equated with the words of Jesus Christ. Not the Catholic Church or a denomination or a church building. He said everyone that is of the truth hears his voice. How do we know if we hear his voice or not? Is that by going to a Catholic Church service, going to confession, going to a church building and hear preaching, going to meditation? None of those things. How do we know if God's speaking in something or not? Well if you don't have an objective standard to judge all things by, there's no way of knowing. Therefore anybody can just make something up and claim God was telling them to do something, or somebody heard God's voice. There's no way to justify objectively whether God was speaking or not. Therefore we have to have a standard. And this is why God gave the first physical written scripture by His own finger, the Ten Commandments. Now we have an objective standard to go by. But God didn't stop there. He inspired biblical writers to write the scripture that He intended to be included and also the apostles whom Christ appointed, wrote the New Testament for you. So therefore, we have the beginning to the end of Scripture in one binding book. It's called the Bible. And it's not an accident that it's called Bible. Basic. Instructions. Before. Leaving. Earth. Just a coincidence? If the Bible is not sufficient, then why would Jesus refer to the words of God, Scripture, Him being the truth, and that we can know the truth and it will set you free? Even Catholics cannot answer that. But these also are scriptures that prove that scripture is the truth and the word. Daniel 10 21 But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. Truth is noted in scripture and scripture is noted in truth. But how much of the scripture is truth? Do we just cherry pick which ones we decide is truth and which ones we decide is not? No. If there is a God, don't you think he would be intelligent enough to tell us exactly what he expects from us in a book since he told the Bible writers like Joshua to write the book of the law so the children of Israel can know what God wants from them? I'll give you the Hebrew and Greek word for that, duh. John 2 22 When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture, and the word which Jesus had said. They believed the scripture, why? Because they believed God can communicate to writing because it is official documentation. Written recording is more official, it's evidence, and it's proof. And they also believe the word that Jesus said. Is what Jesus said scripture? If that's true and if it's also true that he is the truth, John 14 6, then scripture coexists with truth and with what Jesus said. Acts 17 11 These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. They searched the scriptures daily. Why didn't it say they sought the priests or scribes or teachers or pastors or church-building denominations? Because they knew the scripture was sufficient. Otherwise they would not have searched them daily. It's interesting that the Bible tells you to revert back to it and gives examples of those who did. But then stuff shirt lying money-hungry people, like the Catholic Church, will tell you to go to a church service or go to the priest or go to confession or go to the Pope, for your answers. Very opposite agendas. Going to the Bible only will cause you to humble yourself and glorify God. 
Going to man for answers in religion of the world will cause you to exalt yourself and glorify mankind. 2 Timothy 3 15-17 And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Paul even told Timothy who knew the Holy Scriptures that it was the Scriptures that made him wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. It wasn't a Pope somewhere, it wasn't a priest, it wasn't a church building, it wasn't a denomination, it wasn't a religion, it wasn't a creed, it wasn't the so-called five fundamentals of the faith. It was the Scriptures. If the Scriptures are not sufficient then Paul would have told Timothy that he has known the Holy Scriptures along with the teachers and priests and popes and scribes and Pharisees, which were all able to make him wise on the salvation through faith in Christ. I guess Paul didn't care very much for religion of the world. John 5 38-39 And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Isn't that interesting? Jesus said they didn't have His Word abiding in them because who God has sent they did not believe. Then He tells him to search, what? The Pope the priest the scribes the Pharisees religion a church building a denomination a creed the basic fundamentals of the faith? No. He said, search the Scriptures. If the Scripture is not sufficient by itself He would not have told them to do that. Also did He say, the Pope the priest the scribes the Pharisees religion a church building a denomination a creed the basic fundamentals of the faith all testify of me? No he said the scriptures testify of him. One more passage to conclude this study. John 16 13 Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Remember this verse? 1 John 2 26-27 These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Who is the anointing that we have received? It's the Holy Spirit. The Bible is clear that we do not need any man to teach us because simply the Holy Spirit is our perfect teacher and leads and guides us into all truth. I don't need somebody to teach me the Bible. Now if you are a new convert then yes God uses teachers and pastors and evangelists etc. to teach you at the beginning and point you in the right direction, to the Bible to find the answers. Those are godly Christian men. However religious men will always recommend or suggest the Bible, but more strongly emphasize going to man for answers because they want to be gods and the final authority. This priest mentioned the apostolic tradition. There is a tradition that is honorable to God the words of God. 2 Thessalonians 2 15 Therefore, brethren, stand fast, and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word, or our epistle. Unity is a must to be a true Christian, Christ-honoring and exalting church. So, how and where do you draw the line? John 4 24 God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So the question then is, what is truth? John 18 38 Christ gave the perfect answer, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. John 17 17 Since Christ stated that His word is truth, and since He has magnified His word above all His name, then the answer is obvious. The Bible is the final authority in, all, matters of faith, doctrine, and practice. So, now the question is, which book is God's book for the English people? For that answer, see my post with the title, Which One Which One? It will for sure give the answer. It's the KJV. The standard is very simple. The Bible is the standard on how a true Christian church is to stand, function, and be structured. The Bible makes division and it brings unity. It roots out the heresies and heretics that cause division and don't obey the words of God, and it brings unity with the brethren. Therefore, If you are being born again by the Spirit of God, and believe the Bible is the Word of God in our language without error, you and I can fellowship. If you don't, then we can't. We have to go our separate ways. It's that simple. The Bible is the standard. Not tradition, religion, or denomination. Conclusion. Sola Scriptura is biblical. But some of you say, well the Bible does not say the Bible or the Scripture is efficient enough. That is true. But the Bible also does not say to go to man for answers for truth and I know that's what you are emphasizing by rejecting the Bible being the final authority. So therefore, if you're going to be consistent with that, then not only do I not need the Bible, but I also don't need any church or religion or denomination or mankind to tell me what truth is. Are you going to go that route and be consistent? No of course not. 
then you have no case and no logical consistent reason to reject sola scriptura, as in the Bible is sufficient and the final authority of all matters of doctrine and righteous living. Some final logical points to prove sola scriptura. Some of you want to say, well the Bible doesn't say the Bible is sufficient. That's true. But the Bible also doesn't say Jesus is the only way of salvation. It doesn't say it, does that mean it's not true? No. Bible also does not say that Jesus is God. Does that mean it's not true? No. The Bible also doesn't say that God exists. Does that mean it's not true? No. It's the fallacy thinking of, no appearance of writing, therefore it's not true.